my husband just had a surgery in January and got complications from it with blood clots and our whole winter was spent trying to take care of him and get him back to normal and the medical bills were absolutely phenomenal. In January he had um, he had rotator cuff surgery on his shoulder and in the process developed blood clots in his legs and lungs and so his recovery was most of the winter. In trying to um, deal with this and now we're facing the um, having met his deductible we still have many medical bills and one of the things we're finding that is starting to be a little aggravating is Blue Cross who is our, our um, insurance company has been paying things and then suddenly they decide to retract it and take it back and so then we get a bill afterward. In this last year our premium went up 50 percent. We were paying $1,263 last year and it went up to the $800 $1,800. So in essence, we're paying $21,600 a year for health insurance for three of us in our family. And we've checked into other insurance companies and basically we've been told that we're, you're in a, in a zone is how they explained it to us. I mean, I know the story so well because I had the same thing happen. We were part of the same plan. We have a group of farmers. Everybody's gathered up, put in the same pool. Some of them are sick, some of them are well. Slowly, the insurance company says, come over, healthy people, to this new pool. Come over here and join us. But you have to apply, you have to get accepted. So they pull out all the healthy people, and Laney and I and lots of other people that have, you know, little illnesses or big illnesses are left in this, uh, this pool. What happens? The costs go up, they say, we have to raise your rates. We raise them again, we raise them again, we raise them again you have to keep making the payments for your zone and that's why your premiums are going up. And the people that are there are squeezed. And that's not the way insurance is supposed to work. Insurance is supposed to spread the risk over everybody. That's not the way it's supposed to work. They close that pool and then they leave the, let the cost go higher and then they, people drop out because they can't pay and the sickest and the sickest and the sickest are left and they're paying 2100 1800 a month, 2500 a month. That's wrong. That's not the way it should be. And we are dairy farmers, and so we are self employed, and we do have the store down here now, and we don't have an option for, for getting insurance anyplace else. Because we are self employed and we like being self employed, we are looking for um, help for us and for other people, not only just farmers, but other people that are self employed that you know, with just like a reasonable health insurance. And a couple years ago, our daughter was in a horse accident, and um, for a five hour in the emergency room, we were charged $17,000. And they misdiagnosed her and told us she was going to have to have surgery because she was going to be paralyzed. And after my husband asked them to recheck and see if they could do another test, they came back and said that they had read the wrong CAT scan and, and she didn't need the surgery. And we spent six months battling our insurance company and with our insurance agent to find out why they weren't paying more things and just had to keep after them. And we realized now at this point, after my husband's surgery, we're going to have to do the same thing. And it's just very tiring. And I think sometimes they count on that because they don't want you to, to be that um, vigorous to keep after them. You know, you just think, okay, fine, we're just going to try and pay it. And, you know, because it is, it's a lot of phone calls and it's a lot of making copies because they... They'll say they didn't get the papers, and, and we realized we're going to have to do that again. I mean, he had a surgery that cost um, $15,000 for the surgeon and $15,000 for the, the medical center where he had the surgery. And, and then after that, it was every little thing they gave him was another cost. So. Well, because we work very hard. <laughs> um, we milk cows and we have some young stock and we sell corn. Um, we bought the store. It's our first year buying the store. I was working out um, as a substitute teacher so we had no benefits like that. Um, I was working for someone else in another business and decided that if we were going to work that hard then we wanted to work for ourselves. And My husband's always been a hard worker too. It's starting to get real tough. I mean you live on an income that's not fixed. You don't know how much you're going to get every month because of what the dairy price is going to do. 
Um, it's been dropping and if it continues to drop, we, we don't know what we will do. If we will can even be able to, for ourselves to be able to afford the health insurance. And you try to do, um, you try to set up payment plans with them. Um, we're finding now that they're, they're getting more tough about that. They, they just want their money and they actually wanted us to sign a contract where there was interest involved. It just doesn't seem right that the medical world needs to be that complicated for people. I mean, when you're sick or you're facing an accident or, or something that's happened that's been traumatic in your life, you know, you would just like to think that someone's out there going to work with you and help you get better and, and not make it worse, you know, when you're trying to, to pay your bills and to, you know, just keep going. I just wish that all of the people that, um, that are in our Congress and our Senate and everyone else, I wish that they could look at the health care issue. Um, I'm sure that they don't have health issues as far as pay, um, payments and premiums, and so maybe it's not a major concern for them, you know? The old adage, just walk a mile in my shoes. There, there were three good bills in the Senate that were introduced this year. All three bills would make a statewide pool, put everybody in the same pool, and when everybody's in the same pool, then the risk is average for everybody. When the risk is average, it brings down the cost. And one of the studies that was done on one of these bills said that the cost would be in, in, in a 2007 dollars about $340 a person. And that's what employers would pay, or if you were self-employed or if you were a farmer, you would pay that amount. And the deductibles would be about $300 per individual, about $600 per family, and they'd have small co-payments, like $15 to go to the doctor, $15 for generic drugs, $20 for um, brand name drugs. All very affordable. And the whole system could be done if we would change the way we pay for health care. When you think about it, almost every other country, major country, has health care costs that are half of what we pay, and their people are healthy. Rita was talking about children, and you were talking about children. Infant mortality, the death rate of the small children, is better than, than the United States. People live longer, and they pay half as much. Insurance companies take a very large part of what we pay. And then the other problem was what we're talking about, that the, that the hospitals and providers are, are spending a lot of money on marketing to try and get people competing for the same, figuring out who, who, can, who they can lure in. Medicare, the state system that covers, that covers you, this, I mean this, the federal system that covers you, the Medicare administration, like the paperwork, is 3% of the whole system. When we look at our system in Wisconsin, we pay about 31% for overhead for paperwork. There's a, a, a hospital administrator that I know when, when I was talking on the campaign trail, he said, if we did one simple thing, if we had a universal billing form, the same form, everybody, every insurance company fills out exactly the same form, that one simple thing would save 40%, or he could lay out 40% of the people in his billing office. One simple form. What's the problem? You know it. Nobody wants to stand up to the insurance companies. Nobody wants to take that 30% that we're paying an overhead, move it down to 20%, or move it down to 15%, or heaven forbid, move to the Canadian system and make it even lower. Nobody wants to stand up to them. Why? <laughs> Think about it. These guys are invested. The guys that are down there are invested. You know, the, the insurance companies have invested in their campaigns. We should say to the insurance companies, if you're going to play, you're going to cover everybody. You're going to make money by being cost efficient, 
by providing good quality of care. You're not going to make money by avoiding risk. That's not what we're going to pay you to do. This problem is solvable. We know how to solve the problem. There are a lot of people all around the state that want to see the problem solved. Think about it. School districts have costs out of control. County boards, cities have costs out of control. Labor unions, this is the most contentious issue for people negotiating contracts. What happens? What, what's happening now is that there was a bill written by our good buddy, Mr. Brown, among other people, that would make it illegal to negotiate for health insurance for labor unions. That's what's happening. That's how bad it's getting. We're shifting the cost with like health savings accounts. We're shifting it onto the person, to the family. Look, the insurance company has made enough money. We don't need to give the insurance companies any more money. Think of Mr. McGuire, the CEO of United Healthcare, I think it is, up in the Twin Cities. He had 1.6 billion in stock options last year and finally said this is enough. 1.6 billion with a V would be enough to cover every single person in the state of Wisconsin that doesn't have insurance with about $3,000 and have money left over. And if this is doable, but we have to stand up to the big guys. We have to raise more hell and fewer heifers, which is my motto. <laughs> I guess we would just like to see some kind of a, a consistency for everybody and a fairness for everybody and not just ourselves and not just the self-employed. You know, and, and so we're hoping for some kind of a consistency and someone who's willing to fight for us to do that. And um, Kathleen has talked to us and has said that she is willing to take on the issue of health insurance and that means a lot to us and to a lot of other people and so we really wish her luck and support her and hope that she can get something done so it's a more fair equity for all of us in this situation.